More on this is uh, House Homeland Security and House Counterterrorism Subcommittee Ranking Member Congressman August Fluger. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Before we get to the Apple and Google part of this, um, let's go ahead and start with the letter that you wrote to Elon Musk and what you were asking for. Well, Jackie, thank you for having me. And the letter is very simple. Uh, thank goodness for Elon Musk's standing up for free speech and making the statements that he's making. Um, we want to know from the new CEO, from Elon Musk, what sort of request did the administration make to Twitter specifically um, to be the purveyor of truth, to censor speech, to make sure that stories like Hunter Biden's laptop or the origins of COVID were not actually told to the American public. So it's a very simple request and it doesn't stop there with Twitter. Obviously, this is our best chance right this second uh, to get to the bottom of what I think is going to be a much larger story. Well, and if anybody is going to reveal that information, it might be Elon Musk. So we're going to have to wait and see uh, specifically how he responds or what he's willing to reveal. Um, but that brings us to this idea of Apple and Google, these tech behemoths, the amount of power that they have. Um, they literally could crush Twitter in some ways. They crushed Parler. And, and of course, that's the fear. Um, if you take the product off the App Store, uh, off of Apple products, for example, that's a huge issue. If you pull your average advertising like they are doing, that's a huge issue for the company. Um, we have talked a lot over the years about uh, the power that these companies have been able to amass over time. Yeah, Congress really hasn't done anything about it. And now it appears they're playing politics. Well, you're right. And, and I think that the going forward in the commitment to America is the Republicans' commitment to take on big tech and to make sure that freedom of speech exists, that content moderation doesn't pick winners and losers. And the analogy I've heard lately is that when Apple does something like this, it's basically like having the pitcher and the catcher and the umpire all in the same team, all, all as one person. And that's not fair. There's no competition there. And I think that's exactly what we as Republicans intend to do. Um, and a shout out to Kathy McMorris Rogers, hopefully the, uh, the incoming chair of Energy and Commerce, uh, who is willing to take on Section 230 and make the reforms so that free speech will survive and it, and it will continue to be the most important amendment we have, the First Amendment. Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida um, slamming Apple. Let's listen. Apple is threatening to remove Twitter from the App Store because Elon Musk is actually opening it up for free speech and is restoring a lot of accounts that were uh, unfairly and illegitimately suspended for putting out accurate information about COVID. So this is a Republican governor reacting to what's happening. Then we've got a tear from the Washington Post. Washington Post the left's opinion on this opinion elon musk is harming free expression on twitter not protecting it and that's the situation that we're in right now congressman um you've got half of people saying that they liked it exactly the way it was that that was you know that because the other side um was spewing falsehoods according to them that they should be censored and what elon musk is trying to say and what the right is trying to say is why can't everybody have a platform for free speech and have a healthy conversation and dialogue and debate why should anybody be censored? Well, that's exactly right. And Governor DeSantis makes an excellent point. Um, and you see the trend with this administration. They started with DHS trying to have a disinformation board. They want to control the narrative. And when the facts don't back up their story and it doesn't have a, the narrative isn't good, then they change it or they squash it or they censor it. And that's exactly what's going on here and why it's so important that we stand up for freedom of speech, even though we may not like it or you may not agree with it. It is called freedom of speech for a reason, and it really is the essence of our country, and we have to protect it. And Elon Musk has really put him out, himself out there um, in a very, very real way. Nobody else seemingly wanting to take these issues on, and, and he is. He may triumph. He may fail. Um, we have to give it time to play out. But um, your thoughts on the fact that he was willing to put his head on the chopping block in this way? Well, again, like I mentioned earlier, thank goodness for Elon Musk uh, for, for his um, ability to get back into Twitter and, and really regain that platform so that it is a public forum um, that's not beholden to a government narrative. And uh, yes, he is taking a risk, but I think at the end of the day, regardless of where you stand on the left or the right, a political ideology, um, freedom of speech is absolutely um, 
an implicit right that our country is based on, and uh, we're going to get there. I think a lot of people would agree with you, and they believe in defending the Constitution, and they support Elon Musk, so we shall see. But we appreciate your time, and um, we look forward to having you back on to discuss uh, what happens with the letter, the request. And this is a story that just is ongoing uh, day on a daily basis. Congressman August Fluger, thank you. Thank you so much.